<laughs> Best preacher of the Mangans. <laughs> I love my POA. Keep loving me. Make them clap, Phil. You're clapping. Make them all clap. I love this platform. You like it? If you don't, don't go to heaven. It's walls of jasper. It's gates of pearl. It's stones that I can't even name. It's streets. One street through that city. They say streets of gold. I read it the other day. I think it said the street of that city. So it's pure gold. So you don't like this? Don't go to heaven. It's better than this. You may be seated, but you may get back up. And don't miss Sunday school. Sister Tenney is teaching class Sunday morning. And what a message we heard this past Sunday. But tonight, what Christmas means to me. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. This is so wonderful. It is more than wonderful. If we ever get a vision or a revelation, is what I should have said. If we ever get a revelation of what this is all about, you would have to tell, you, you would have to be told to be seated. And before I get through tonight, I wish that I were able to give you that kind. Even I read this morning, early, 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 the first two or three chapters of Ephesians. And I felt Paul's agony. It was like, and I've got to get on this or they'll make, they'll make me close it out before I want to. But I felt his agony. You know what it was? He was a man with so much revelation about even this that I'm going to talk about. He, was, he got all of those revelations and mysteries were given to him like the mystery of godliness and the mystery of this and the mystery of that. But the Apostle Paul seemed to be laboring of how to get it across. He was in agony for them to get the interpretation or the revelation of what he was writing to them about, even the mystery of Jesus Christ. This scripture in Hebrews of course, you know me. I believe that it was the Apostle Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews, and I've got a, a whole message on it where P, Peter even referred to the words of Paul in Hebrew. He says, For verily he, Jesus Christ, took not on the nature, took on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So let my first words to you be tonight. That alone is enough to make Christmas possible. That is what makes Christmas possible. Christmas is the day that I, I, I couldn't have earned what, and you couldn't have earned. Christmas crowned us with a dignity that is impossible for us to describe to you. So whenever you are listening to this message tonight, I pray you get a revelation God bestowed a dignity on us that we could have never earned. Both men and angels had lost their way. Jesus Christ made a choice. He chose to redeem mankind. He chose to redeem you and me. And we all know that God gave to mankind privileges that he never gave to the beast of the field. The Bible declares in Job 35 and 11, who teaches us more than the beast of the earth and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven. Isaiah 1 and 3 says, the ox knoweth his owner and the little mule, I call it, his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider who their master is. Now we know through God's word, this divine revelation, that a joy, we enjoy 
what angels would never experience. We know the prophets inquired into this. We know the angels desired it. And yet, the, the, uh, 2 Peter 2 and 11 says that angels are greater in power. And Jesus said that in our highest redemptive state, that's what we will be like. We will be like angels. At Stephen's martyrdom, they saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. He, and Paul said there were times when he spoke with the tongues of angels. Angels are immortal ministering spirits. You've got to get all of this so you'll understand. So what is the seed of Abraham? He took not on him that of an angel. He took on him the seed of Abraham. He himself said what Abraham was. He said, I'm dust, I'm ashes, Job 30 and 19. Job 17 and 14 puts it in simple language. I have said to corruption, thou art my father. I've said to the worm, thou art my mother and my sister. So you cannot argue with that. When he took on Abraham's seed, all you've got to do is to go to funerals or graveyards. That is the seed that we will be talking about in a sense. There's not much glamour in the human race. When you compare the human race with angels, and Paul says, he who will change our vile body, he calls it a vile body, Philippians 3 and 21. This mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible, that's me, must put on incorruption. Every one of us, that's the seed of Abraham. Angels move in heaven. We move in the dust among fleas and flies and moths and spiders and crawling worms, bugs and lizards. This is Abraham's seed. Get a hold of that. And now, who among us, if given the choice that God had, would take the worse and leave the better? Yet our Lord and Savior didn't even give it a second thought. He took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Merry Christmas. He granted something to you and me that he denied to angels. This we know. Angels can sin and have sin. Now get this. But when they fled, our God didn't go looking for them, searching for them. He did not even act as though he cared. They have no promises. They have no gospel. They have no evangelist. They have no witness. They have no missionary that will ever be sent to them. I want you to get this. But when man that was made in his image, when he fell, he mobilized all of heaven and went after him. Say, he went after him. He went after man. That's the philosophy of this church, POA. Just get a hold of it tonight. That's, the, that's this church philosophy. Going after people. Going after mankind. And here is the supernatural fact. When he not only mobilized all of heaven, he pursued them even to the mouth of hell. He went, and here is the fact. He went after him in person. He could have sent something else. He went after him in person. The incarnation is the Christmas, it is the Christmas that you're going to be celebrating. That's the incarnation. What is the incarnation? It's the Almighty God, say the eternal spirit that has no beginning or no end. Uh, if I could think of the scripture in Hebrews 10, where he offered the whole eternal spirit offered him up. All I'm telling you that God Almighty is a spirit, but this eternal spirit, here, here's the supernatural fact. The incarnation, this is what Christmas means to me. That incarnation was to take on a body to go to Calvary and the resurrection and the ascension, all of that is what Christmas means to me. That's what it means, the resurrection. Had he not come and done all that, because he lives, we know we're gonna live. Our loved ones are not in limbo. 
because he even raised Lazarus from the dead. He even cried about that because he knew we'd cry with our loved ones. But he brought him back to death just as an example to show you what, there's nothing, the best is yet to come for all of us. The best is yet to come. We're down here with the worms and all, all of that. This is the most wonderful thing in all of the world for us to celebrate Christmas. You're celebrating the Gethsemane. You're celebrating Calvary. You're celebrating the resurrection. And so Jesus told it this way. This is what Christmas means to me. <clears throat> and don't forget the philosophy of this church. That's the philosophy of this church is going after him. If he went after him, we're here in his stead. We're his ambassadors. We're the ones that's going after them, what he did. And he told it this way. I know I've called it even a trilogy, a parable of trilogies. But really, this is just one parable with three stories. It's the story that he told about the lost sheep. It's really one parable, but it's about lostness. It's, uh, and he said, he searched through the night until he found him. That's what this church is all about, folks. That's what Christmas is all about. Are you hearing me? Are you really hearing me? This will not make you shout. And don't misunderstand me. I don't mind you clapping, but I don't need an amen. I don't even need you to clap. If you understand what I'm talking about tonight, we'd have to hold you down and keep you from singing and shouting and glorifying. You'll never praise him enough. You'll never thank him enough. You'll never glorify him enough. The God Almighty, the creator of the world, took on a human body, became a little baby, became flesh, and I'll put a little girl, 14-year-old girl, I've got her song right here, if I have time. She had to know the Old Testament because her song, a little old 14 or 15-year-old girl, we never will praise him enough for all he went through to give us the hope that we have. I'm just telling you that this, that when he told the story of the lost sheep, he was the one that he was going to go searching for that lost. He found him. He laid him on his shoulders. He brought him home again. He came himself after me. He said in Hebrews 10 and 5, a body thou hast prepared me. Oh, that eternal spirit. It was as though Jesus said, I will prepare myself a body. And let me just tell you, I will go myself and find my sheep. I will lay him on my shoulder. I will bring him home to me. I'm going to get me a body to go after them. I'm going to get me a body to do that. So Christmas is not just another holiday. If you really understand what I'm telling you tonight, you will enjoy Christmas, your family, your food, and everything. It's to be enjoyed. Like you come to church and we clap our hands because we know our Savior. We can have fun. We can do this and all. But don't forget, you wouldn't even be having this kind of a... He's the church. I love the church. I love to go to church. You can clap your hands. You can clap your hands. I, I love to go to, he loves the church. He loved it. He gave his life for it. This is his bride to be. Folks, if you really understood what it was all about, they couldn't keep you away from here. They couldn't keep you from prayer. They couldn't keep you from rejoicing and praising the Lord and singing glory to God in the highest. Are you hearing me? Just tell me I'm listening because you will enjoy Christmas if you will understand this. If not, it's just another holiday to you. He did it with love. He did it with compassion. He did it with eagerness. He did it with pursuit. It was uppermost. It was unto death. He went to hell and back for us. Before he was 34 years old, he had found me. Before he was 34 years old, he had found you. Before he was 34 years old, he had bought you back from hell. Before he was 34 years old, that's what this is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. He found me. I wear his name proudly. He saved my soul from hell. I'm not just sitting here on a platform uh, on a pew tonight because I'm something good. There ain't nothing good. I'm moths and I'm fleas and I'm, I'm dust and I'm ashes. I'm the seed of Abraham. I'm going to tell you how to get in on that. Don't you leave me. I've got a message here for you. And if I've got strength enough to get it across, Christmas means everything to me. And I love this because of what I read in heaven. 
If you've got a problem with this, you've got a problem with heaven. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Light it all up. Broadcast it. Tell it. Shout it. Tell it on the mountain. Tell it everywhere you go. Oh! I wish somebody would get excited about it. I'm not talking about uh, that I have to have that to encourage me, but I just wish you'd get excited about Christmas. I love all of this. And in his final moments of that search, such agony, intensity, commanded my Savior that drops of blood, sweat ooze from his prepared body, body in a manger, that, that's how anxious he was to find you and me. What will I do and what will I go after in this? This is my Savior. This is my Lord and Master. This is my Redeemer. This is my go-between. This is my advocate. This is my everything. That's how anxious he was to find you and me. If you're not on the hot trail of souls, you're not in the business that Christmas is all about. I know that. I know that doesn't make you shout. See, I know that. So what is it in you and me that he loved, but loved not in an angel that sinned? Why did he come looking for me and not for them? We're talking about what Christmas means to you and me. What if their world had been mine and yours? Let me tell you about it. In that eternal, irrevocably misery, there can be no Christmas. There can be no songs. There can be no joy. There can be no peace. There can be no forgiveness. There can be no hope. We could name all that we enjoy, exchanging gifts, Merry Christmas, greetings, family meals. The Bible describes their world in these words. Listen to it. And delivered them that rebelled in heaven, and Lucifer led the way, and one-third of them were cast out. I don't mind you even saying he kicked them out of heaven. Now the majority of them, not all of them, they were delivered into the chains of darkness. Say eternal. Eternal. Say eternal. They'll never come out of there, folks. They will never. He didn't go running after them. He didn't go chasing after them like he did you and me. And then this is what Christmas is all about. Those angels that rebelled and sinned against God because of pride. They wanted, he wanted, Lucifer wanted to be worshiped. He didn't, he didn't ever give up. God made him again. He made him at Calvary, stripped him and made him, embarrassed him and showed him off to the whole world. If you think this is a rotten world with its headlines of grief, smear, lies, lust, murder, bloodshed, greed, and so much more, think about that world. Just say it with me again. Say reserved in everlasting. Say everlasting. That's, that's not purgatory. Everlasting change of darkness. They're reserved there right now. They're in everlasting chains of darkness. That could have been our world. That could have been our world. Who said that? Right there, that could have been our world. Christmas makes the difference between heaven and hell. Are you going to enjoy Christmas? Christmas makes the difference between heaven and hell. I'm so glad that I'm here to worship Christmas. This is what Christmas means to me. Oh, that could have been my world. Please hear me. Christmas makes the difference between heaven and hell. And you make the choice. You make the choice. When you hear, this is more than a story. This happened. And you need to give others that choice. That should be our top priority. And I tell you again, that is the philosophy of this church. Jesus determined what a wonder. What a, I, I, I thought about it when I was getting this and studying. I thought, oh, God, Jesus, what a wonder you are. What a wonder you are. The world of everlasting, not annihilation, everlasting chains of darkness will never be my world. It will never be my world. He in a prepared body, the body that Mary gave birth to when she said, being unto me according to thy word. That word entered into her dark, wet womb 
and flesh began to wrap around it. That was the Word made flesh in the 14th. Go ahead and clap your hands back there because when people see that, when they see that, folks, when they see that, surely you would not just uh, let any, don't let anything get you down. The best is yet to come. He loves this people. There's no way to tell you. Nobody can tell the love of God. God is love. He's going on to prepare us something and is begging us all the time. He watches over me day and night. I'm his and he's mine. I don't need any gifts. I don't need anything else. I just need another refilling of the Holy Ghost. I cannot tell you how happy I am. I cannot tell you what this means to me. Oh, my word. He prepared himself a body, came after me until his feet split. He raced after me until he cried, I thirst in John 19 and 28. He hanged naked between two thieves. Naked, street level. I know it's not a real high mountain. They were there mocking. Numbered with, he was numbered with the transgressors. That's where Jesus died. Say, in the middle. Come on. I want you to get this. Say, in the middle of humanity, Jesus died naked. That's the artist's conception that you see. They stripped him. Oh, there's no, way for, there's no way for nobody to preach this. And Paul, I read this morning, he was in agony. Oh, that you knew the mystery of Christ. Read Isaiah's portrait of the Calvary from the Living Bible. Here's 700 years before it happened. Isaiah, a man, he detailed the what, but not the why. Read how whipped and flogged near death for the healing of our body. I wish everybody in this room that needed a touch would just say right now, I plead the blood over me. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over you, dear. I went over there to find out what uh, her, her readings were today. Uh, and all I'm telling you, there's healing for us in this room. There's healing. Yes, yes, there is, Aubrey. His back was beaten till one more lick would have killed him. He was stripped. Oh, brutal, then cruciating, lancing the veins and ripping the nerves and back laid open. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to make a, a gruesome Christmas. This is Christmas. This is what he came for. The baby in the manger. And, I, and, and shepherds telling about it, if I get there. The, the, always the little town, the little this and the little that and the little this. It's all little. It's all little. Oh, and he died in such a on a brutal, rugged cross with that on that back that one more lick would have killed him. Saw his bleeding hands, spikes driven through them, torn flesh. They saw facial features and painful spasms, and his eye, little old eyes quivering. Mary had to look at all of that favor, the favor of Mary, favor, Mary. You found favor with God. Favor, favor is going to cost you. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, I don't mean to disturb you. I don't mean to make you sad. This is Christmas. Mary had a Merry Christmas, a M-A-R-Y Christmas. Here's what Jack Shuler wrote in his book, Some Days, I, I, here, Some Dogs I Have Known. Uh, and I quote, and he said, I'll make an observation. Earth's son has looked down through the ages on countless tragedies. Wars have raged beneath it. Bodies have lain in pools of blood in its scorching rays. Famine and pestilence have been disclosed to it. Swollen, bloated bodies of sailors drowned at sea have been revealed to it. Murder and rape and pillage have been revealed to it. Uh, acts of infamy and pollution and filth have never caused the sun to blush or to turn dark and turn its face. But the lewdness that he has looked upon, I cannot even describe. But on the day of the great atonement, when weighted with the sins of the world, the Lamb of God was nailed to the cross. His suffering was infinite, and, they, and God in heaven turned his back upon his sinless Son, now became sin, his incarnate body, 
when the broken Messiah raised his bleeding, lacerated face to the heavens and cried, I tell you, the sun shuddered and trembled. It blushed and frowned. And even though it was midday, it drew a curtain of darkness across its face and drenched the earth in the blackest night that it's ever known when Jesus was crucified. And that stayed that way for three hours. Happy, Merry Christmas. Say, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. When I say Merry Christmas, he was born for this purpose. This is what it's all about, to come after you and me. He came in. Christmas means one thing. He hurried. Oh, he hurried to stand between you and me and those everlasting chains of darkness. He didn't. He didn't run after them. They're there, everlasting darkness. He ran after us and anybody that would turn down this, I'm not going to say what I would say if I was talking to just one of you. In their head. I've got two. I've got two here. But they got another one. He hurried to stand between us and those chains. That would have bound me to a third part of heaven's renegade rebellious angels. Christmas means one thing. It means Jesus, what a wonder you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just say that with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and, go ahead and thank him. Oh. He did not say, I will represent you. He said, I will represent them more than a successful attorney represents his client. I will be one of them. Jesus took my place. That's what Christmas means. Don't leave any unwrapped gifts under that tree. There are gifts under that tree for you and me tonight. And they're not unwrapped yet that he has bought for us. Even those nine spiritual gifts, they haven't all been unwrapped. But the gifts underneath, the joy, peace, long-suffering, it's all under the tree. That's Christmas. He chained himself to me by an inexorable act that can never be refuted. Again, I'll remind you, he entered the stream of human history in the incarnation. He lived as unfallen man. He overcame and destroyed Satan, both legally and dynamically. All that Jesus Christ did in redemption, he did for the benefit of the church and for you and me. Everything he did, you can have it or you cannot have it. I want it and I'm going after it. Whatever I have to pray, whatever I have to pray, however I much I have to shout it down or clap my hands. I'm going after it, Jennifer. I don't care, you don't have to stand. You may be weaker than I am, but all I'm telling you, you better go after this. You better go after this. I'm not, I'm not, up, to where, I'm not up to where that precious man, Pastor, baptized him this morning. But I, I, and then I'll tell you what I said when they got through. But Christmas uh, has no finality. There will always be a Christmas. There will be a Christmas in heaven. The lamb is mentioned in Revelation, say 28 times. Say 28 times the lamb is mentioned. The lamb, Mary's little lamb, Christmas will be always in eternity. When angels sang and announced to men shepherds, shepherds, he can never put off, hear this, that is the guarantee of my salvation. Hear me again. He can ever be unborn. He's done been born. That's the guarantee of my salvation. That's why Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, can lay hold of my heart. This is not a story. It is Almighty God incarnate in the fleshly body of Jesus Christ, who so loved the world, the entire world, who so loved me, who so loved. He came to seek, listen to that, and, and, and if we say, go seek and save the lost, nobody shouts about that. He came to seek and to save the lost. We ought to be going after the lost every day of our lives. That's Christmas. You wouldn't even be sitting here saved. You'd be in chains of darkness and hell. Go ahead and clap your hands. Say, I'm getting it. I wouldn't be sitting on this front row. 
He so loved us. That's, that is why the power from on high that overshadowed Mary and the Holy Ghost that came upon her is the same power from on high that he told me in Acts 1 and 8 that I could have. And that's not going out of style either. This same Holy Ghost that filled that 120 on the day of Pentecost, it has filled me. It's the same overshadowing power that overshadowed Mary. It's the same Holy Ghost that overshadowed her. She conceived of the Holy Ghost. So is, who is the father of the Holy Ghost? If the Holy Ghost overshadowed her and she conceived of the Holy Ghost, who's the father? I'll leave that with you. But he knows all about you. He knows all about me. He knows my habits and my hangups. He will find you wherever you are. He understands your loneliness. He is acquainted with your grief. He understands that this is Christmas. He understands where we go and give out toys. And, Come on, man, no, no, no. And we'll go and go and go again. That's our job as a church. We've been left here in his stead. We've got healing in this place. We've got salvation. We've got help. We've got deliverance. You can have it. That's Christmas. That's what Christmas means to me. I can be healed. I can be saved. Go ahead back there. I thank God for you standing. I thank God for you standing. I thank God for you, Wando, raising your hand back there. All I'm telling you, folks, get a hold of this. Say, it's, it's a revelation. Say, this is a revelation. We'll have the merriest Christmas that we've ever had. We ought to be talking in tongues at our Christmas table. Really, we ought to be. This is Christmas. Oh, he will find you. You, you, when, when he drank that bitter cup, oh, he experienced your misery. He experienced it. He drank it to the bitter, to the dregs of it. He didn't want to, did he? He didn't want to become a sinner, did he? He became the worst when he drank all of that. And he nailed that sinner to the cross. Yeah. And my sins were in his body yeah. when he nailed that body there. Or I wouldn't have a ghost of a chance. I'd be in ch everlasting chains of darkness. He didn't go after them. He didn't go after them. He came after me. He found me. That's why they have to call me down over there. I mean that. I mean that, Brother Chris. I mean that, folks. This place ought to be in a roar if you've even got one taste of it yet. How wonderful. Say, who am I? Thank you. Why did he pity us and not angels? What was it? Was there a tempter? The angels had none. No one tempted them. No one but God knows. The grief this earth has because of the devil. This is what God knows. This is Merry Christmas. That old dragon Satan, Lucifer, that old archangel, read him in Isaiah the 14th chapter. His five I wills, his pride lifted up. Devils assault men. Powers that science and education can never silence. Torment the race. They have no cure for the devil. The devil, God knows and cares. He knows what you're fighting every day. He knows the temptations your kids in school and what they're facing. He knows all of that. That's Merry Christmas. He's coming to save them, to help them, to overshadow them, to protect them. Then again with the angels, some fell, now follow this, some of those angels fell while others stood. I want you to remember that. Some of those angels withstood Lucifer and they're there today praising and worshiping God and they visit you and me. But in Eden, listen, in Eden it was different. There were no survivors in Eden. Every mother's child died in Eden. The human race was ruined, completely ruined. Would God allow the event, that event to pass into a mysterious, no, 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 mystery? The decision was this, God came to say redeem, redeem. to buy back, to recover, to reconcile, to get them back. I will not let them go into chains of darkness. I'll go till my feet split and my hands split. 
They can put a crown of thorns on me. They can, do, they can mock me. They can hang me there naked. I'm going after you. I'm going to be with you Christmas morning. I'm going to be with you every mile of the way. I'm going to help you. I'm going to supply your needs. If you believe that, I wish you'd just say, I love you, Jesus. Am I doing good, Pastor? I prayed all week that I'd have those attributes, that I'd be a mature saint, but that I'd have those attributes. Oh, he came to me. God incarnate became the answer to all of my needs. My tragedies, my, my loss of my loved ones. He's got, he's got a resurrection waiting for us. Wherever Elijah is, I just told Theta, Sister Tini this. I said, wherever Elijah is and wherever Enoch walked off of this planet with God with, wherever they are, that's where my beloved is. That's a pretty safe place to be. Hey, we've got promises that no angel ever had. And yet God said we're going to be like that. But we're here with the dust and the ashes. We're Abraham's seed. Oh, you couldn't clap your hands good enough for that. You'd never, you'd never do it. You'd never do it. You will find it in Zechariah's song of praise, Luke 1 and 7. I've got his song. I've got them all here because I sing them. I sing them to myself. I, 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 may, I may write me another song after all of this. I mean, they're supernatural. I believe in the supernatural. Everything about this is supernatural. We're in a supernatural church. That's the only explanation for the church. It's supernatural. Do you know the star that came, stood over the place where he lay? You think that was one of those natural? No. He knows the name of all the billion stars, but that one special star, say that was a supernatural star. This is all supernatural, folks. You can be healed here tonight. You can be delivered of whatever. You can get your needs supplied in this service tonight. You can get your sins remitted here tonight. You can be filled with power from on high here tonight. Go ahead. Say, I want more of it. I know why Abraham's seed, I know now, why this name and character what particular signature did our Lord take upon himself? Number one, there was circumcision. You know where I'm headed now. There was circumcision. By it, he became a debtor to the whole law. It was something I could never do. It was, it was a just demand that I faced. Paul described the old law obser observances as the handwriting that is against us. Say there was handwriting against us. That's what he nailed to the cross. Colossians 2 and 14 will tell you that. He set me free of that debt. He paid it all in full. When he said it's finished, it's finished. You don't need to try to drag it up anymore. It's over. He nailed it to the cross. It's under the blood. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. It was growing every day. But Jesus willingly, deliberately, mercifully took my place, came after me. I wish you'd get a hold of that word. He came after me. He shouldered my obligations. Oh, that's what Christmas means to me. Now, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, for all all in one in Christ Jesus. Keep it, Paul, I read this in Ephesians this morning. The unity of the Spirit, he, he kept driving that to every one of those churches. Ephesians, Colossians, uh, Galatians, all of them. Keep the unity of the Spirit. Walk in love. You've been purchased. We're going to someplace wonderful. Don't hold anything in your heart. Repent and get forgiveness. Forgiveness is the greatest thing on planet Earth. And, re and, and repentance is the greatest thing. And then to be forgiven of everything you've ever said or thought or ever done and be covered by the blood. Are you kidding? Merry Christmas. This is what Christmas means to me. And if you be Christ, in other words, Hear this, if ye be baptized into Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, here's why, and heirs according to the promise, Galatians 3, 27, 29. Read it when you get home. It, it tells those that are baptized. 
into. We're heirs of God. Get a hold of this, Christmas. We're heirs of God, God. And joint heirs with whom? Jesus Christ. That's who we are. That's who, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's who we are. I'm an heir with Jesus Christ. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I don't believe you believe me yet. I'd try to rope you if you ran around this house or I'd try to, but, but that, that's enough to make you get up and do like, I used to say, but I used to see Brother Mangan shake his legs like that. That's enough to make you jump up and down. That, it is. We, we didn't come to church to be silent. I carried him when he was nine or 10 years old to every church in this city, every church. He went where he got a little hat slammed on his head at one and where the, the man who read the scroll, the, uh, he, he, he did it with his back to the audience. So I knew when his schoolmates would come and we shout and did all of this, I wanted him to see some other stuff. I didn't want him just to inherit that. So after we left there and, and uh, I looked at Anthony and I said, who's weird? Are we weird? Or is that weird? I never heard a word he said. He had his back. Folks, let me just tell this. Let me just. <laughs> I said, when they come and your mother shouts or claps her hands, who's weird? I carried you to another church and you coughed. And when you coughed, everybody turned around and looked at you. <laughs> Are we weird? Or who's weird? I've got something, folks, that I don't care what nobody. Now get this, in Colossians 2, 10 through 14, Paul further explains. Paul wrote 14 books in your Bible. If people don't understand this, they don't, this book is it. It's not what the Mangans are, or the Coxes or the uh, Tinnies or anybody else. It's this book. In Colossians 2, 10, 14, Paul further explains, and ye are complete in him, Merry Christmas, which is the head of all principalities and powers. Notice, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off this body of the sins of the flesh when Pastor Gentry baptized that man that I went over there and hugged tonight, I hugged him. He's my brother in Christ. I can hug him. I'm nearly 97. I can hug him anyhow. When that man came up out of that water, and I was sitting there in your chair, Pastor, and I was praying. That's where I sit there, and then I sit there, and I sit in, in uh, uh, my beloved's chair. But when that man came up out of that water, I was praying he'd be filled with the Holy Ghost and talking in tongues, but he, but he didn't. But when he got up and pastor was hugging him and they got through and everything was silent, I had come up here, standing up here on this platform. I said, pastor, let me say something. I said, that precious man, every morning I told him, I said, if this book required that of me, every morning before breakfast, there's such a great feeling. I want you to stand up and tell, the, I want this, if I want to embarrass you, I want you to stand up and let these people see you. Huh? Don't make him do that. Sorry. I, that's just me. 
I know. His name's Greg. Huh? His name is Greg. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what I told him. Can I tell that? I said, if this book required me to do that every morning before breakfast, it's such a good feeling till I'd get up every morning and I'd be in line. I'd be in line. That's how good it is. I cannot tell you. That's the name of my Savior. That's the name of God incarnate. That's the name of the blood. He's the one who shed his blood for me. And that washing of water by the blood, all of that, that is the most wonderful thing in all of this world. Oh, you can be seated. I don't want to embarrass nobody. I'll embarrass myself. So, putting off this body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, we ought to be willing to be baptized. Notice now, buried, here's what Paul said in Romans. He said this in Romans, in Colossians, in Ephesians. Bur this, is, this is Romans. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God that I read to you in Colossians with the circumcision of the heart. Pulls off that old natural heart, and odd, and odd, and all that, when we go into that. Who hath raised from the dead, and you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him. Notice, notice, this is what we ought to run tell on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. You ought to go tell them there's about 28 things you can tell them that God said, I'll bury your sins and never remember them no more. I heard pastor preach it. I heard him preaching on that. Having forgiven, having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you. I'll soon be through. I'll soon be through. And took it out of the way. This is the greatest supernatural miracle that could happen to anybody is for you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and your name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> Blotting out all of your ordinances, he took it all away, nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers, made a shoe of them openly, meaning he embarrassed the devil, he stripped him, he, stripped, he triumphed over him, he can't call you a sinner anymore because he took all the sins and he nailed them to the cross. Say, I ain't a sinner no more. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Now, here's what Paul told, told the Romans. Know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like us, Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, the eternal spirit. Even so, we also should walk in Jesus' name, the newness of life. My salvation is in him and him alone. He's the, he's the name of everything. In, he's the main character in this book. He's the main character. He's the God eternal. He's the God incarnate. And for by grace, I just got a little bit more, Bishop. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is faith acting upon the grace of God. The grace of God is the system that brought salvation. The system of grace is this. Moreover, brethren, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, here's the grace of God, the grace system, not the, uh, uh, what you call it, of grace, not the uh, attribute or the, uh, of grace. Here, here's what he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Okay? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, how he was buried, according to the Scriptures, and how he rose again, according to the Scriptures. His death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. And it translates into Acts 2, 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. No angel can do that. They're in chains of darkness. I would have been there too but there was the grace of God that came running after me. And the promise is unto you and to your children 
It is the call of God. Say the Urs of Chaldee. Say the Urs of Chaldee. That's where Abram came from. It's the call to the Urs of Chaldee. It's the call, that's Abraham's world. It's the Babylons of this world, that's our world. In Jesus Christ, I am part of that seed. I'm a part of the seed of a woman. I'm a part of the seed of Abraham. I'm a part of the seed of faith and obedience by appropriation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is that plain enough? Is that plain enough? That is what justification by faith means. Now this I am through. Say, just as if I had never sinned. Here it is. No, you're not, Paul said to the Corinthians, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor, re nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you're not in chains of darkness, dear. Everlasting chains of darkness is not your world. Such were some of you, but you've been washed. You've been sanctified. Listen before you clap. Say, I've been justified just as if I'd never sinned, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. I've been justified by being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with His glorious power from on high, the resurrection power. That is my complete means of what, it, what my world, what a lost angel host can never know what I know. That's what Christmas means to me. Jesus took on a fleshly body, took my place, paid my debt. That's enough for me to know I'm through, folks. You do with it now what you want to do. You can stand. You can talk in tongues. You can do anything you want. Go ahead. You can holler. Say, I know what. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wouldn't stop. I would not stop. I wonder if anybody just wants to shout hallelujah. I just wonder if anybody wants to shout hallelujah. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God hallelujah. I was going down for the last time. Joy to the world. Go tell it on the mountain. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just hallelujah for a while. Am I good or what, Pastor? Good. <laughs> come on, somebody. Come on, Jennifer. Somebody come and help me. There you go. Don't forget her mic, Brother Curtis. Amen. Amen. That's what Christmas means to me. God of the universe took on flesh, dwelt among us, lived, died, was buried, rose again, all so that this corruptible could put on incorruption one day and one day I'm headed to a city whose builder and maker is God because Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords came down God Almighty robed in flesh he died for each and every one of us you're special don't sell yourself short you're special the King of Kings died for you the Lord of Lords bled for you that's pretty powerful when you think about it. You want to repent of your sins? You want to be baptized in Jesus' name? You want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and experience God Almighty living on the inside of you? We'd love to pray with you. Come on down. We'll pray with you. Thank you for being at church tonight. Those of you that are watching by way of the web, it's been an honor to have you. And don't forget what Christmas means. It means that God Almighty robed himself in flesh, died, was buried and rose for all of us. That's what Christmas is. So go tell somebody about it. May God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Have a great night in Jesus' name.